G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Obviously day one is now done and dusted in terms of the 2023 AFL draft. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you a pretty rapid fire mock draft for what the rest of the draft could look like now that we've got the information that we do, so that the orders change, some, some new clubs have picks, and um, you know also where the Father Son and Academy stuff went, uh, which picks got absorbed and which didn't. It's shaken things up a little bit. And uh, of course, you know, based on what players were taken in the first round, that might impact certain club strategy going into the second and third round. So, like I said, I'm just going to try and give you a pretty quick mock draft for the rest of the draft. Now, I'm probably not going to get it right. There was definitely a few surprises in that first one. And as you get later in, uh, into the draft, it's harder and harder to get it right. But we're going to have a crack anyway with my club taking the first selection. Before I kick it off, though, if you don't mind doing me a favor and subscribing to the channel, it'd be much appreciated. It's been a nice little period of growth for the channel. You guys are wonderful. Um, but if you could subscribe, that'd be fantastic. All right, so for the second time in a row, West Coast will kick off the draft. In, in contrast to day one, where everyone knew it was gonna be Harley Reid, this one is a lot more open-ended. My logic is the Eagles will need to start probably with some pressure on taking the tall based on how the first round went and a number of good talls still on the board. This was agonizing to choose between all of them, but I've decided to go for the local talent in Zane Zakostelsky uh, out of Claremont. He could potentially be there at the Eagles' second pick, but um, with the amount of tolls around, are available right now, West Coast will want to get in and make sure they get this one early. Then Brisbane enter the draft and will take Ari Schoenmaker, a player really considered for West Coast pick. Um, but they will probably go tall, and he is one of the best ones available. Then Geelong, having taken Conor O'Sullivan, won't necessarily need to go tall, but they might look to add Archie Roberts, the running defender, a player I had sliding in my last mock. It could still happen, but I was kind of basing that on just a bit of, well, nothing really. Other than the fact that he was starting to slide, um, but when now with Geelong's mix, I actually think he would be a good pick for them. And they also didn't have this pick before. This was Essendon's pick before. So what do we got next? St Kilda on the board. And I've got them finally taking Ollie Murphy, a player that they were linked to take, I think, with their previous pick, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. But this guy's sliding. And to be honest, it kind of scares me. There's something to suggest that he might slide further. And uh, I would love to him at West Coast pick uh, where we took Zach Ostelsky. But I've just got a feeling he's going to slide a little bit further, but not further than St. Kilda. I know he tested poorly, apparently, at the combine. So then you've got Carlton having taken Ashton Moyer already. They could probably just go best available, and I think they might go Mitch Edwards, the Ruckman out of WA, another player previously had sliding, but I think he uh, I think he makes sense for Carlton, to be honest. Richmond's first selection, I'll take Cohen Sanchez, the West Australian small forward. Then Geelong, with their third pick, having taken a defender, uh, or a key defender, and a small, def well, running defender, rather. They'll take a small forward this time in Jack Deline out of South Australia, a very productive small forward that uh, I think will be a good value selection for him. And I can just see him at Geelong, to be honest. Then we've got Collingwood. Their first selection uh, was Harry Demetia. They've got to go tall. They've got to go tall with this selection. And I've taken a lot of the good ones off the board um, in the last handful of picks or so. So they'll probably take Archer Reed at this point, a uh, tall key forward prospect, 203 centimeters, very raw. And I think he suits a club like Collingwood both for their positional needs and the fact that he's going to have time to develop there. At Fremantle at pick 38, their first pick in the draft, no Sanchez available for them. I'm going to double down on them taking Sean Manor. I think they're going to need to take Sean Manor at this pick. And I've got some other targets for them in mind, but I think the, the next pick's not too far behind this one. Essendon then have pick 39 in this scenario, and I think they will take Luamon Lawal, a running defender who is a next generation academy player for the Western Bulldogs. The Bulldogs just miss out. They can't match this bid by a couple of picks. So then West Coast have their third selection. They've taken the pressure off needing a tall uh, by taking Zach Ostelsky, and I've got them taking Joel Frazier, a uh, dynamic wingman sort of outside mid who really does add something that West Coast don't have, and I can see him appealing to the West Coast Eagles. Then Fremantle's second selection, uh, having taken Manor, their, their mature age target who will help him in the short term and come straight into their best 22. I've got them taking a tall prospect in Luke Lloyd. This is the back end of his range, reportedly. We were he was supposed to probably go around this range, uh, but I think at 193 centimeters, I think I've got him down at. A little bit of a smaller key forward in, in terms of compared to most key forwards these days coming out of the draft. Then Brisbane's second selection, Logan Morris, a uh, again, another undersized slightly key forward, about 191 centimeters. And again, they get the bookends there in Schoenmaker and Logan Morris, and they'll bow out of the draft there. 
Then I've got Richmond bidding on two Giath. And in this scenario, uh, Hawks can match as a next generation academy talent. I couldn't fit him into the top 40. So this is a pleasant surprise for Hawthorne. They'll match the bid and take two Giath as their third selection. And then Richmond take the big bodied inside midfielder in George Stevens. A lot of people think he'll go earlier than this. I'm a little bit skeptical, but that's just my personal opinion. And to be honest, we're all guessing at this point. Then GWS have their final selection. Now, having taken Govard and James Leake, they can afford to look at the midfield now. I think it's probably necessary. And they'll take Clay Hall out of Peel Thunder in Western Australia, a big body inside mid. And um, seems the loyal type, but I don't know. So the Bulldogs then have two selections in a row, and these will be their final two selections. I've got Tarkin O'Leary, the small left-footed uh, run all day wingman. And then they'll double down with Cooper Simpson, another midfielder. So a good midfielder's draft for the Bulldogs. They had their key forward father son in Jordan Croft. We know they've got Riley Sanders as well. And they'll just replenish the midfield with a couple of players in Tarkin O'Leary and Cooper Simpson. Maybe I have their needs wrong. Maybe they go for another defender or whatever. Uh, but I am happy with that. So then North have their final selection, having taken five first rounders. I'm not 100% sure they're taking six picks, but I think they've left that option open. So if they are, I've give them, given them Nathan Philactides, a small defender out of Victoria. Again, this they've got a pretty balanced haul so far. I do think Philactides is quite different to Hardiman. So I think at this range, he's a good value selection for him. West Coast at 49 will take a outside midfielder in Will Lawrence. I'm doubling down on this one because I think he would be a good pick for them, and I'm hoping he lasts as long as this. Uh, good classy wingman. Hawthorne will take their final selection. They'll take their own father-son in Cal Shadir. That, that's uh, one play they've already kind of publicly more or less committed to. So they'll exit the draft with their key forward as well as 2 GF, which is a really good draft haul from Hawthorne. Then we got Richmond. They'll take a Tasmanian midfielder in Jack Callanan or small forward. I think he's a bit of both, to be honest. Sydney, they may or may not take this selection. They're going to wait and see what's on available, uh, what is available rather. And I've got them taking, for the purposes of a mock draft, keep them in the draft. I've got them taking Kane McAuliffe, a big bodied inside midfielder to go with uh, Cleary, who they've already got, and Will Green. So just a bit of contrast there between Cleary. Uh, he's a much bigger bodied sort of player. Carlton, I think they're taking four selections. They've been linked to Matthew Carroll. So this is where I'll take Matthew Carroll for them. Uh, having taken Ashton Moyer and Mitch Edwards. So pretty balanced haul there again. Then Port Adelaide with their only selection. I think they're only taking one. I've got them taking Sandringham to Will Brown, a big body inside mid, who could go earlier than this. I just couldn't quite fit him in. Um, maybe I've got that wrong, but I think that's a really good uh, bargain for Port Adelaide. Pick 55, Geelong have two of the last five picks, and uh, they'll probably go best available at this late in the draft. I've got them taking Bodie Ryan, South Australian, 187-centimeter um, defender, which leaves West Coast with their fourth selection, and they'll take Cade Delarue, a uh, player that I think I've just heard a bit of a murmur we're into late in the draft. Again, I think this would be a bit of a bargain. I really like him as a midfielder forward. Fremantle, again, looking for forward half players. They'll take Harvey Johnston out of Victoria, a forward midfielder. Geelong then, finally, again, not so much on need because this is another defender, but Angus Hasty, and I think he's quite different to the, uh, the mix that they've currently got. A very fast rebounding defender. And then as far as I can tell, West Coast is probably the only other club that might take a final pick. So they'll close out this draft. And I've got them taking their own next generation academy talent in Oscar Hine Baston, who is um, probably, if he if he lasts one more pick, I suppose the Eagles could pass and they could get him as a, um, a rookie chance or uh, however the rules. I think if you don't take your next generation academy talents or no one does, you can rookie list them. So that, that one might actually just happen that way if West Coast do have the final selection. Uh, but either way, I'll include him in the video for creative purposes. So there it is, guys. That is my rapid fire phantom draft for tomorrow. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, again, obviously it's gonna be very wrong, but it's still fun to, to do these as thought exercises and you can map out who's still there. And I haven't decided who I want. Zach is not necessarily my preference. I'm probably thinking Murphy. But we'll see. We'll see. I've actually got no idea yet still, it's, uh, which is probably a good position to be in. So anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Remember to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.